Good evening, everybody. This is Dr. Murli Bharadwaj, your classmate in NEET PG preparation. Today, September 13th. Hai. Another 100 more days before we are going to become the NEET PG topper. Today, I am going to discuss with you five important general medicine topics. General medicine, you are Dr. Murli Bharadwaj students means 30 out of 30 marks you should get and score in general medicine. Now, the first topic for today is how are you going to evaluate a case of thyroid disease? Lot of times this question is being asked in the NEET PG exam. You should be very well versed with the uh, flow chart. But yeah, TSH is the starting point. If the TSH is decreased, it is hyperthyroidism. TSH is increased, it is typically hypothyroidism. Brother, now TSH is decreased. If the TSH is decreased, you have to get the free T4. What is the evaluation we need to do? Free T4. So once you do the free T4, suppose if the free T4 is normal, fir bhi TSH is decreased, then what are the possibilities that come to your mind? Hashimoto's thyroiditis is one important entity. Subacute thyroiditis, which is in a transition from the hyperthyroid towards hypothyroid stage, in subacute thyroiditis, you have both the phases, hyper initially, then hypothyroid. Why hyper initially in subacute thyroiditis? Thyroiditis is an inflammation of the cells. There is an inflammation of the cells. So initially when it, cells are inflamed, they will break down and release the stored thyroxine and that lead to hyperthyroidism. Ultimately, there is a burnout and that lead to hypothyroidism. So such a kind of patient who is in the transition from hyper towards hypothyroid, such a patient will have a low TSH but a normal free T4 is what you need to remember. So two things you will remember whenever TSH is decreased but uh, T4 is not increased but it is normal. It is Hashimoto or a subacute thyroiditis in the transition from the hyperthyroid to the hypothyroid stage. Very good. Now, free T4 is increased. TSH is decreased, free T4 is increased. That is what we are expecting. Because low TSH may free T4 increased, though it is a proof that there is a hyperthyroidism. Now, you do the radioactive iodine uptake. If the radioactive iodine uptake is increased in this hyperthyroid patient whose TSH is decreased and free T4 is increased, what are the possibilities? Three possibilities. Graves disease, toxic adenoma, multinodular goiter, any of them can be responsible. All these three. If you take the Graves disease, there is a diffuse increase of the radioactive iodine uptake. Diffuse increase, diffuse increase, right now. Then toxic adenoma, multinodular goiter, ethinome, hyperthyroidism is there with the increase of the radioactive iodine uptake. But if the radioactive iodine uptake is decreased, decreased, what are the possibilities? TSH is decreased, free T4 is increased, but the radioactive iodine uptake is decreased. What is the possibility? It is the subacute thyroiditis in its initial hyperthyroid stage. Then Hashimoto's thyroiditis is the second possibility where Hashimoto thyroiditis entered its uh, hypothyroid stage. Hypothyroid stage. In that stage, there is a decrease of the radioactive iodine uptake. When a subacute thyroiditis, even though it is in hyperthyroid stage, but since the follicles are getting destroyed and releasing the thyroxine, which is responsible for its hyperthyroid stage, 
if the follicles are getting destroyed follicular cells are getting destroyed in subacute obviously radioactive iodine uptake will be decreased is what you need to remember postpartum thyroiditis it lead to a low tsh high free t4 but a decreased radioactive iodine uptake or if you are giving a exogenous t3 or t4 that is a levothyroxine and that is causing your free t4 to be high and tsh get decreased such a thyroid gland also will show a decrease of the radioactive iodine uptake you will not forget that this is very important examiner tomorrow's neat pg exam me aapke saath khelega kabadi 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 out aap out nahi hote aap kya karte correct answer dete kyunki you are the part of our neat pg 2000 super 2000 group of dr murli bharadwaj who will do the self preparation and become the topper now doctor tsh is decrease free t4 decrease ho gaya decrease ho gaya aisa hota kya generally tsh decreased means we expect free t4 to increase but it decreased in contrast what is the possibility what is the possibility the low tsh is because of a pituitary pituitary disease so pituitary hypothyroidism or a hypothalamic hypothyroidism in all these things tsh is not produced so it is decreased and that is making t4 also to decrease so free t4 decrease that is both of them are hypothyroid conditions now doctor tsh is increased if it is increased you will think of only one possibility only one possibility and that possibility is primary hypothyroidism tell me what are all the causes for the primary hypothyroidism primary hypothyroidism ka matlab kya hota hai thyroid gland mein problem hai production mein problem hai thyroxin ka that is the reason tsh is increased tsh is increased but if the tsh is decreased and leading to hypothyroidism that is secondary hypothyroidism because of the problem in the pituitary or in the hypothalamus is what you have to basically remember very easy very easy provided you should know thande dimag se samajh lena concept ko that is very important doctor so primary hypothyroidism ka causes kya hote hain hashimotos thyroiditis post radioactive thyroid ablation आप रेडियो रेडियोथेरेपी दिए रेडियो एक्टिव थायरॉइड को दिए पिचुट्री आई मीन थायरॉइड ग्लैंड को एब्लेट किया थायरॉइडेक्टमी सर्जिकली और सब एक्यूर थायरॉइडिस एंटर्ड इट्स हाइपोथायरॉइड स्टेज देन वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट सर्टेन ड्रग्स द थ्री इंपॉर्टेंट ड्रग्स दैट इंटरफियर विद द थायरॉइड ग्लैंड टू प्रोड्यूस द थायरॉक्सिन व्हाट दे लिथियम propyl thiouracil and methimazole antithyroid drugs and lithium please don't forget lithium so many times it has been asked the cause of the primary hypothyroidism is what you need to remember and any infiltrative disease doctor like scleroderma amyloidosis scleroderma amyloidosis also lead to the development of a primary hypothyroidism is what you have to remember very good acha bachcho abhi second important up up already one mark aa gaye examiner remember you will all remember me in the exam hall on the on that earlier page which i discussed definitely one question aata hai acha graves disease versus subacute thyroiditis versus हशीमोटोस थाइरोइडिस एग्जामिनर आपको पूछने वाला है डिफरेंसेस क्या है भैया एंटीबॉडी डायरेक्टेड अगेंस्ट द टीएसएच रिसेप्टर एंटीबॉडी डायरेक्टेड अगेंस्ट दी एट दी नॉट अगेंस्ट एट दी टीएसएच रिसेप्टर टी सैब एंटीबॉडी इट इज अ थाइरोइड स्टिमुलेटिंग एंटीबॉडी 
that is stimulating the thyroid directed against the TSH receptor is what you see in Graves disease. Grave is more prevalent in case of females. Subacute thyroiditis kyo hota hai? Viral, possibly mumps or cogs ki. Phir is Hashimoto jo hota hai, wo autoimmune hota hai. Hashimoto kaha ke wale hai? Japan ke wale. Japan mein cars ka banavat hota hai. Hai na? Maruti Suzuki. So you should remember Japan, Hashimoto, autoimmune. But yeah, now, Dekho, doctor, what is important is very focused with the clarity. Samajna. That is important for the neat PG success, doctor. Ham itna itna bada material padai kiya, itne sare books padai kiya, underline kiya. Oh, matlab nahi hai. What is important is very precisely examine. Suddenly, exam hall mein, you should not be shaken at all. Now, doctor. Graves disease mein hota hai hyperthyroidism. Grave presents like a diffuse thyroid gland which is painless goiter. Whereas how will be the subacute thyroiditis ka story? It is initially hyperthyroidism. The moment the inflamed thyro thyroid cells are getting destroyed, thyroxine is released. That lead to hyperthyroidism. That is followed by the hypothyroidism once the gland is burnt out. Oh, hota hai, subacute thyroiditis. Then Hashimoto thyroiditis. It occasionally presents with hyperthyroidism. Is ko kete hai, Hashitoxicosis. After that, it will go into hypothyroid phase. Hashimoto is also painless enlargement. Graves disease is also painless goiter, which is diffuse. That is common for both of them. Now, doctor, proptosis. Exophthalmos, always what is the important rule about uh, the Graves disease? Any hyperthyroid condition ko grave nahi bolte. Grave bolne ke liye, the essential criteria is involvement of the eye. Only when ophthalmopathy hota hai, exophthalmos hota hai, hyperthyroidism ke saath, then only you will consider the possibility of grave. There is a lid lag, diplopia, conjunctival injection, pretibial myxedema. Baya myxedema bole to you will think hypothyroidism. Magar ye grave hota hai, hyperthyroidism hota hai, ye pretibial myxedema kehte. Isliye all myxedema hypo nahi hota. Hamara grave hyper hai, phir bhi pretibial myxedema rehta hai. Kocha? Now. There is a tender thyroid. Because subacute thyroid is viral, when the infection is there, there is pain. So that is the reason it is a tender thyroid. They will have malaise, upper respiratory infection symptoms. Hutch, hutch, hutch. Because they have uh, uh, sneezes. Hota hai. And uh, Running nose hota hai, upper respiratory infection ke baad milne wala thyroiditis, I mean thyroid, hyperthyroidism is subacute thyroiditis. They will have initially some amount of fever. So this is one important difference in the clinical presentation, but very important for you doctor, grave versus subacute thyroiditis versus Hashimoto thyroiditis differences we are now talking about in graves disease there is an increased radioactive uptake this point ko pakadna hai hum kyo subacute thyroiditis mein there is a decreased radioactive in uptake wo to infection hai subacute thyroiditis infection bole to hamara dadi ma kya bola beta esr badega so that is the reason subacute thyroiditis mein esr will be fine and uh, Hashimoto's thyroiditis may, Hashimoto's thyroiditis may, anti-TPO antibody will be there. That is the point you need to remember. Most important, every time need PG may push ne wala question ye hai. Increased radioactive iodine uptake with hyperthyroidism, think of Graves. Decreased radioactive iodine uptake scan with the hyperthyroidism, think of subacute thyroiditis. Brother, now.
How do you treat doctor? We give propyl thioracyl, methimazole, thyroid ablation with I-131, thyroidectomy, ophthalmopathy may require surgical decompression, steroids, orbital radiation, they all have a role in the grave. Whereas subacute thyroiditis, may mainly you have to give NSAIDs because it is painful. Pain hai to brufen le de na, to brufen kya hota? NSAID hota. So NSAID for pain control, steroid for very severe pain and it is often self-limited. Most of the viral infections are self-limited. Dawa liye to teen din mein katam hota, nahi liye to do din mein katam hota. Hai na? So that is what you need to remember. Then Hashimoto's thyroid is ultimately become hypothyroid and levothyroxine is considered to be the treatment of choice. Now you have become the masters. Now, doctor, one of the favorite questions surgery may put you in Definitely one question on you. I say, cheese on go up a friend case at the bed, a paper pen leke. I say, he discuss kareto, he, ye yaan rahega. And these are the ones which are the tricky questions, and definitely examiner is going to test you in the tomorrow's neat PG. Okay? Now, please don't forget, doctor, tomorrow is September 14th. Day after tomorrow, September 15th, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. We have a marathon session, live online YouTube broadcast is there. Aapke saare friends ko lana, super 2000 batch of Dr. Murli Bharadwaj mein join hone ke liye. Live online broadcast hota hai, absolutely free hai. You have to pay zero rupees, no tension. In fact, online me chai nahi pila sakte. Agar Hyderabad agar aap aaye to aap sab ko chai bhi pilaega. ठीक है? So please don't forget we have a day long session. Attend it. Okay? I will do a marathon revision. There are about twenty five topics in every subject around two three hundred very important questions. And we will have a topic wise classification of those questions and do a discussion and say we are good in orthopedics by tomorrow evening. We are good in ophthalmology by day after tomorrow evening on September 15th and 14th. Please do come. YouTube.com slash online MBBS. But yeah, thyroid nodule. Hai. Your approach is how is TSH? First, TSH is low. If the thyroid nodule is there, there is a low TSH, what is the next investigation? Examiner will ask you. Sir, I want to do thyroid scan and radioactive iodine uptake, I want to check. That is going to be your answer. Right? Now, if the low TSH is there, one more important test you want to do is thyroid ultrasound. Then you will look. You will typically select the nodules using thyroid ultrasound. What is the purpose? You will identify those nodules. You can be able to do FNAC. If the FNAC comes out to be benign, approach is serial follow. If the FNAC may kuch bhi samaj bhe nahi raha hai, then you repeat the ultrasound guided FNAC. Aapka senior resident ko bulao aur repeated FNA karo. Then if it is a follicular neoplasm, don't wait for anything. You have to do the surgery. Because follicular neoplasm, FNAC may follicular cells dikhaye to, you are not sure whether it is benign or malignant. Unless you do surgery, then only you will be knowing. Because follicular neoplasm, for it to be decided to be cancer, follicular carcinoma, you have to demonstrate the capsular invasion. Capsular invasion. How can you show that in FNAC? You can't. That's the reason you have to do surgery. And whenever FNAC, whether if it is a papillary or any other histology, if you have suspicious of malignancy, then also surgery is considered to be the next line of the clinical management. That is how you approach the thyroid nodule. Achha.
Now, doctors, let us do few basics. Let us get better. Methimazole should not be given in pregnancy because it can cause congenital anomalies. Whenever thyroid nodule is there, there are certain statements examiner want to take from you. Examiner is like a FBI interrogator. You are the future top surgeon, right? You have to give a affirmative sentence, answer. 90% of the nodules are benign, thyroid nodules. 90% are cold and non-functioning. And uh, on the radioactive iodine uptake scan, uh, if you uh, look at what is the percentage of these cold nodules or malignant, suppose if you think so, then 15 to 20 percent of those which are cold, they are malignant. Whereas, if it is a functioning nodule which is taking up the radioactive iodine very well, only 1 percent of those hot nodules are malignant. This is what you need to remember. 90 percent of the thyroid malignancies, they present as a nodule. It's like how you approach a thyroid nodule is the favorite question. More than 90% of the thyroid cancers are either papillary or follicular. These are the statements you have to be very sure about. Now, doctor, if you look at the primary thyroid cancer, not metastatic, majority of them are papillary or follicular and they basically carry a very good prognosis, best prognosis. The medullary thyroid cancer, it can produce a increased amount of calcitonin and men 2A, 2B, a dono syndromes may, you will have medullary thyroid cancer, you will not forget. Achha, abhi, very important question. Gaya. What are those ultrasound features that are suggestive that it is a malignancy? You should not forget. Hypoecogenicity. Always simple thing you remember, doctor. Cold boleto, you will remember hypo. Hypoecogenicity. So, jab bhi kam hota hai, kam, kam, decrease, decrease, decrease bole to dar lagta hai kyunki wo malignant ho sakta. Loudly baat karne wale kabhi bhi tension nahi dete. Jo silently baat karna band kar dete, WhatsApp switch off kar dete, Facebook se recognize bhi karte aapko. O log hota hai, cold. Cold is very malignant, doctor, whether it is romance, whether it is romance or whether it is uh, thyroid cancer. Now, hypoecogenicity, microcalcification suggest malignancy, irregular margins suggest malignancy, and any increased vascular flow or a size more than 3 centimeters is considered to be malignancy is what you should remember. Now, whenever a thyroid nodule, thyroid nodule, if it is associated with a low TSH, what is the next best diagnostic exam? Examiner will ask, what will you tell? I want to do radioactive iodine uptake and scan to know whether it is a functioning hot or a non-functioning nodule. If it is a functioning nodule, very well taking the radioactive iodine. I am very happy because it is benign is what you should remember. Now, doctor, the next important point for our uh, Chai Pe Charcha in the today evening with Dr. Murli Bharadwaj, your meet PG companion every day. Dexamethasone suppression test. Iske baare mein Lot of students have a little, uh, somehow, a, a kind of confusion you can call, right? Now, Cushing's syndrome, syndrome hota hai, all hypercortisolism symptoms. Cushing's disease hota hai, jo pituitary mein baitta na, adenoma, which is excessively producing ACDH, usko Cushing's disease kehte hai. Achha, whenever Cushing's syndrome is suspected, what do you want to do, doctor? 24-hour urinary free cortisol. 
First of all, urinary free cortisol should be high. Then only you will consider that it is hypercortisolism. Then only the story will begin. Cushing syndrome, high bulk. Then you have to do low dose dexamethasone suppression test. Suppose if the low dose dexamethasone suppression is normal, hypercortisolism is not there, that will exclude the Cushing syndrome. Kuch logo, jara cheeks are very well swollen. Jara daru jo pite na, daru pite hai. Daru pine walo mein, jo drink pite hai, drink, drink, whiskey, whiskey, whiskey. Whiskey jo pite hai, usme, Appearance Cushing's ke jaise dikta, magar usko Cushing's nahi hai baba. Tik hai. Now, suppose if it is abnormal, if the low dose dexamethasone suppression test is abnormal, what do you want to do? You want to evaluate plasma ACTH levels. You want to do high dose dexamethasone suppression test. Then what will happen? Picture mein, next part kya hota? Aage bado, aage bado. ACTH is undetectable. That is, he has hypercortisolism. ACTH is undetectable. And uh, high dose dexamethasone is unable to suppress it. Matala, somebody in the adrenal has a problem. If the adrenal is excessively producing because of the adrenal tumor, उसको ऊपर के पिट्यूटरी का क्या जरूरत है भाई मैं तेरे बात सुनता नहीं आई वोंट केयर यू यू प्रोड्यूस एसिडिक एसिड यू डोंट प्रोड्यूस एसिडिक एसिड कुछ भी करो तुम मैं नए काम कर लेता हूं सो दैट इज द रीजन एड्रेनल ट्यूमर हाई डोज डेक्समिथासोन सप्रेशन नो सप्रेशन एसिडिक इज अनडिटेक्टेबल ऑब्वियसली व्हेन एड्रेनल बिकेम वेरी इंडिपेंडेंट अपने आप का कमाई वो कमा रहे तो पिचुट्री क्या करेगा वो घर से मनी ऑर्डर भिजाना बंद करेगा मनी ऑर्डर क्या होता है एसीडीएच एसीडीएच बिकम एब्सेंट प्रवर नाउ एसीडीएच इज एलिवेटेड बट देयर इज नो सप्रेशन दैट मींस देयर इज ए लंग ट्यूमर व्हिच इज प्रोड्यूसिंग पैंकोस ट्यूमर से एसीडीएच इज प्रोड्यूस्ड राइट so ACDH is produced from small cell or pancost, squamous cell. From where is ACDH is produced? Very important. Huh? So ACDH is produced by the lung tumor. Even that is also not suppressible by dexamethasone suppression test. Then that is ectopic ACDH. Now third situation, kya hota bhaiya? ACDH is normal or elevated, right? Basically pituitary if pituitary adenoma is there, you call it as what? Cushing's disease. So Cushing's disease mein kya hota, doctor? Typically, ACDH is normal to elevated because pituitary is producing excess ACDH. And uh, if you do the dexamethasone suppression, dexamethasone suppression, the levels will fall down to less than 50%. The levels will fall down to less than 50%. So, the only thing that listens, band karo, bolke high dose dexamethasone bole to, baat sunne wala kaun hai, pituitary hi baat sunega. So, dexamethasone suppression test typically lead to suppression. If it is a pituitary adenoma, that is the Cushing's disease which is causing the hypercortisolism. Samaj mein aage na? Clear? Very good, doctor. Very good, very good. Kal, humare... Uh, ophthalmology, I mean orthopedics day long session ko aana bhulna mat, aapke doston ko bhi bolna ki bhaiya ho hum uh, uh, Dr. Murli Bharadwaj ke weekend review sessions suppose if 5-600 students attend no, and if you give me a feedback that that really helped you to do a quick consolidation within 6 hours when we do 10 to 6, uh, 10 to 5 p.m., right? You tell me, you give me a feedback. Every weekend I will try to do on Saturday, Sunday, right? Uh, one subject, every day one subject like a garam, garam revision karenge. It all depends on your feedback and 
how many of you are coming forward to participate in that free session okay now what is the first step in the diagnosis of the Cushing syndrome doctor you should remember overnight dexamethasone suppression test and measurement of 24 hour urinary free cortisol both the tests are highly sensitive and any normal value of them excludes the Cushing syndrome but yeah now doctor let us talk about a very important scenario here ACTH dependent conditions leading to hypercortisolism versus ACTH independent conditions leading to hypercortisolism ACTH dependent kya hota hai pituitary pituitary adenoma that is Cushing's disease and ectopic ACTH production dono mein plasma cortisol hai urinary cortisol hai ACTH is hai you all agree with me Yes, sir. So, any pituitary adenoma or any lung tumor producing ectopic gas gets. But the difference is dexamethasone suppression test kareto, high dose dexamethasone suppression. Ectopic is non suppressible, pituitary is suppressible. That is what you should understand. Now, what is the cause for the ACTH independent Cushing syndrome, doctor? It can be adenoma or carcinoma. So, even adenoma or carcinoma, what is common thing? Plasma cortisol high, urinary cortisol high, but ACTH is low. But how do you differentiate adenoma from carcinoma? Dihydroepiandrosterone is high in carcinoma, low in adenoma, which is the differentiator, is what you need to remember. Look how many concepts are getting out of the way. Now, doctor, one very important concept. Favorite question of the examiner, right? Pituitary, pituitary, let us now talk about adrenal insufficiency, right? So, I am talking now about hypocortisolism. Hypocortisolism, this is my favorite topic here. Cortisolism. So, how can hypercortisolism can occur if the adrenal is not producing steroid? Then that is called primary primary hypocortisolism or hypoadrenalism or primary adrenal insufficiency. If the pituitary agar ACTH production karna band kar diye to is ko kete hai secondary secondary brother now primary primary how will you know it is typically in case of the uh, primary adrenal insufficiency you will have hyponatremia hyponatremia and hyperkalemia why 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 because hyponatremia and hyperkalemia kyo hota hai doctor they happen because of they happen because of the mineralocorticoid deficiency mineralocorticoid deficiency so why a mineralocorticoid deficiency is only a feature of primary hypoadrenalism but not to pituitary very important question the reason is Suppose ACTH is not produced, let us say a patient is having secondary, secondary um, adrenal insufficiency. Then what is the effect of that? Only glucocorticoid production is dependent on ACTH doctor. ACTH does not stimulate mineralocorticoids. ACTH will make adrenal to produce glucocorticoids not mineralocorticoids so mineralocorticoids will be normal mineralocorticoids will be normal so that is the reason hyponatremia hyperkalemia will not be seen if it is a secondary adrenal insufficiency when a primary adrenal insufficiency may pura adrenal destroy ho gaya. can you give me two reasons for primary adrenal insufficiency it can be edison or it can be TB in India. 
either of them will destroy the adrenal gland then when adrenal is destroyed both mineralocorticoid and also glucocorticoid production get affected and mineralocorticoid deficiency will lead to hyponatremia and hyperkalemia isliye devyo sajano aap bhulna nahi primary adrenal insufficiency mein hyponatremia hyperkalemia hota hai secondary adrenal insufficiency mein nahi hota hai kyunki mineralocorticoid normal hai normal hai agar hamare pituitary mein problem hai to that is very very important gotcha then hyperpigmentation hyperpigmentation is the feature which you see only in primary adrenal insufficiency bhai sa kyun kyunki pehla hyperpigmentation kyun hota hai hypocortisolism mein the moment the steroid is low that will stimulate acth production ACTH के साथ उनके भैया मेलेनोसाइड स्टिमुलेटिंग हार्मोन इन दोनों का मां कौन है प्रो ओपियो मेलेनो कार्टिन सो प्रो ओपियो मेलेनो कार्टिन बिकम डिवाइडेड ब्रोकन डाउन एंड बोथ ए सी डी एच एंड एम एस एच बोथ ऑफ देम आर इंक्रीज वेन एवर स्टीरॉइड इज डिक्रीज बट वेर इज प्रो ओपियो मेलेनो कार्टिन एंड सब कुछ दे आर देर इन द पिचुट्री सो if the adrenal is responsible for the hypocortisolism that will stimulate the pituitary pituitary still zinda hai na so it will produce more msh and more acth and that is the reason high msh lead to hyperpigmentation so hyperpigmentation kaha hota hai typically when there is a primary hypoadrenalism whereas whereas pituitary itself has a problem then pro opio melanocartin nahi hai so msh bhi nahi hai acth bhi nahi hai iske baad no acth that is the reason it is producing hypocortisolism and no msh hence no hyperpigmentation so hyperpigmentation will not be there hyperpigmentation will not be there if it is a primary primary adrenal insufficiency is what you need to remember barabar और एक कॉन्सेप्ट खत्म अम्मा अभी मदर ऑफ ऑल टॉपिक्स आ गया क्रोन्स डिजीज वर्सेस अल्सरेटिव कोलाइटिस जितने बार पढ़ो उतने बार कंफ्यूजन सो so, साथ में मिलके पढ़े तो कंफ्यूजन नहीं होगा That is our whole idea, doctor. Sat sang me am aage badenge. Crohn's me transmural inflammation. Skip collisions. Skip hoke 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 hoke. Crohn will reach the mouth, right? Because it knows how to skip. Easy to remember. Then non-casiating granulomas are found in about thirty percent, and they are typically diagnostic. provided you can be able to rule out the other infectious causes that can lead to granuloma whereas ulcerative colitis is only limited to mucosal it lead to a uniform involvement no skip lesions is lead it lead to a lead pipe appearance it is continuous then what is important about ulcerative colitis cryptapsis or ulcerative colitis and uh, there will be micro ulcerations but no granuloma as an ulcerative okay, okay granuloma crohn le liya isliye now doctors if you look at the anatomic location crohn can be anywhere from mouth to anus because it knows how to skip it most commonly affects the terminal ileum small bubble in 80% of cases whereas ulcerative colitis usually involves the rectum but sometimes it can involve the other parts of the colon and it does not involve the small intestine or above in the gi tract there is a bimodal distribution ek crohn hota hai 20 year ka crohn senior crohn hota hai 50 to 70 ka crohn ye bhi bimodal hai ulcerative colitis 15 to 30 is one Difficult age, 60 to 80 is another time where 
I was ready to collide this can come right now if you look at the GI symptoms Crohn presents with colicky abdominal pain colicky right lower quadrant pain there is diarrhea often with mucus and usually non-bloody Crohn is non-bloody but ulcerative colitis fellow is a bloody ulcerative colitis fellow Crohn is a non-bloody right then perirectal abscess fistulas because it is transmural and the oral ulcers because of the skip lesions are the features of the Crohn's that is what we need to remember and how does ulcerative colitis present doctor cramping abdominal pain urgency and bloody diarrhea bloody diarrhea then Crohn's may fever weight loss erythema nodosum pyderma gangrenosum and uh, the iritis and uh, episcleritis arthritis gallstones kidney stones gallstones kidney stones even they also occur in Crohn's please don't forget each of this is an MCQ doctor itna khas boost topic hai right now what are the other symptoms aapko belly and love sare books mein milta hai this uh, uh, this particular thing is available in all the books doctor but being in books is not enough doctor this should be vetted with a discussion that is very very important okay that is my whole purpose ulcerative colitis also will have weight loss fatigue focus 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 let's bring some focus yeah so ulcerative colitis is also weight loss fatigue arthritis uveitis Episcleritis, uveitis and episcleritis, aankh ko pakad lega ulcerative colitis. Ulcerative colitis will catch up with the eye is what you have to remember doctor. Right. It will also show pyoderma gangrenosum. It leads to erythema nodosum that is common. But iritis, episcleritis more with Crohn's. Uveitis is more with the ulcerative colitis of course ubi desire it is a sub cheese a kitchen now doctor what is the lab both of them will present with chronic anemia anemia of chronic disease iron deficiency anemia vitamin b12 deficiency anemia folate anemia then esr crp is elevated aska aska antibodies very very specific in the case of the Crohn's disease whereas Pianca positivity is the feature in ulcerative colitis then if you do imaging what do you find doctor cobblestoning cobblestoning fistulas in the barium minima CT will show abscesses strictures and the uh, you can do a pathological diagnosis confirmed by doing colonoscopy in case of Crohn's disease. Similarly, colonoscopy helps even in ulcerative colitis, but it will show lead pipe colon, loss of hostations on barium enema. That is what you should remember. So how do you treat Dr. Crohn's disease ka treatment kya hai fada fada bolo? 5-amino salicylate only if it is mild. Oral corticosteroids, azathioprin, 6 mark aptopurine, methotrexate, doom, 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 you have to bomb everything. If it is a refractory disease, you have to give IV steroids, anti-TNF therapy, monoclonal, and you need to rule out perforations before giving that. Then you have to manage, agar kuch fistula hai kya, iske wajah se refractory disease ho raha kya, megacolon, the complication you need to watchful about, abscesses. And resection will be required of that segment involved in because it is all skipped lesions in a doctor. Skip hotana. So it's like resection. Resection still has a role. So if you take the ulcerative colitis, the mild is amino salicylate, moderate is oral steroid, azathioprine, 6 per captopurine, and methotrexate. If it is a refractory, then you need to give IV steroids, cyclosporine, anti-TNF therapy, 
very important answer to colitis me toxic milk of colon very very common in uh, the ulcerative colitis and you need to do resection and always always favorite uh, golden number you should not forget you have to do a surveillance colonoscopy 8 years after the diagnosis then at least annually thereafter right and uh, this is important because of the chance of developing malignancy in Crohn's. Then ulcerative colitis can be associated with primary sclerosing cholangitis, autoimmune liver disease. Laboratory wale baut paise khate. Kyunki ye sab ko monitor karne ke liye aap regular lab test de de rehna padta. Hai na? So there is a whole challenge. Then you need to do surveillance colonoscopy 8 to 12 years after diagnosis and then at least annually thereafter. So that is very very important doctor. Abhi aap to pandit ban gaya hai. The topic of UC versus CD. Now abhi a gaya doctor. Another very 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 important area. Isko, you should not do a mistake if you are Dr. Murli Bharadva students. Hepatitis B virus. What are the serological patterns? Favorite question of the examiner. I have a YouTube video banake host kiya. Wo bhi dekh sakte aap. Now, if it is acute HAV, I am first let us talk about uh, hepatitis A virus. Acute may IgM, chronic may IgG, all of you know. If it is an acute HBV, what do you see, doctor? Surface antigen will be positive. If it is a highly proliferating virus, envelop antigen will be positive. But core antigen ka IgM antibody will be positive. A combination ko kete hai acute HBV. Acute HBV may a window period hota hai window period between viremia and serology serology being fully positive between viremia and uh, after getting infected and after serological positive bit, between the two right during that phase only hb core antigens antibody igm antibody hbc will only be the one which will be there in the acute hbv during the window period favorite mcq of the examiner Chronic active hepatitis B. What will you remember? Chronic ho gaya hai. Chronic ho gaya matlab antibody to surface antigen did not develop. Agar antibody to the surface antigen aa gaya to surface antigen nikal ke chale jayega. Saas ji aa gaya to bahu niklega. Bahu to abhi bhi waisa hi reh gaya. That means it is a chronic active hai. HBV. So HB, yes, AG. Then envelope antigen continues to be there without antibody when you are chronic and active. Then the IgM against the core become IgG. This combination is chronic active HBV. Chronic active HBV. Please don't forget, doctor. Favorite question of the examiner. Not only for examiner, tomorrow when you go for the uh, clinical practice, whether you are a gynecologist, obstetrician, dermatologist, general medicine, any specialty you belong, you should know how to interpret hepatitis serology. If there is any recovery from hepatitis B, kya ho jayega? Surface antigen ka antibody tayar hoga. Matlab saas aayega, bahu chale jayega, bahu hota hai, antigen saas hota hai, antibody, right? Saas bhi ek din bahu tha. Hmm? Now, which type? IgG type of antibody is formed. Then core antibody ka, IgG type of antibody against the core antigen is there. And uh, bhaiya recovery ho gaya, isliye liver function test, shanti ho jayega, normal ALT. Now, you are immunized, you are an intern, internship mein immunization hua na, to agar jo immunized hota hai uske andar, what you should check for? You should check for, SARS ko check karna hai, 
बहुत को नहीं एच बी एस ए बी आई जी जी एंटीबॉडी ओनली विल बी पॉजिटिव देन यू आर इम्यूनाइज इट इज ए क्रॉनिक हेच सी वी अभी हेपेटाइटिस सी आ गया हेपेटाइटिस सी इंफेक्शन वॉट विल यू रिमेंबर हेच सी वी आर एन ए विल बी पॉजिटिव एंटी हेच सी वी एंटीबॉडी विल बी पॉजिटिव राइट एंड देर विल बी इधर एलिवेटेड आर नॉर्मल ए एल टी देन हेच सी वी से रिकवरी हो गया तो anti hcv antibody and the decreased hcv rna viremia is what you have to remember now doctor finally before we say good night shubh ratri and enjoy a wonderful preparation doctor abhi aapko roz companion banke aapke sath baithe ke padhne ke liye dr murli bharadwaj is available so please don't forget we have a wonderful uh wonderful video library of 953 topics doctor where we have done garma garam revision of 30000 mcqs 30000 mcqs right iska revision kiya agar aap 600 hours of your time spend kar paaye to Oh, buddy will stop you from becoming the topper. So please do call our helpline nine triple zero eight six eight three five six, and buy the subscription. Next four months ke liye we have got a very good subsidized price, and uh, you will definitely become confident for the forthcoming exam. Now, doctor, iron deficiency versus thalassemia versus. versus anemia of chronic disease versus sideroblastic anemia kya farak hota hai that is the examiner's question now doctor typically iron deficiency mein there is a low iron in the marrow low iron in the marrow there is a decreased heme synthesis all of us know that थैलेसीमिया में दिक्कत क्या है अल्फा एंड बीटा ग्लोबिन सब यूनिट आर नॉट प्रोड्यूस्ड एक्यूट आई मीन एनीमिया ऑफ क्रॉनिक डिसीज में प्रॉब्लम क्या है देर इज ए वन मिनट डॉक्टर आई जस्ट शट डाउन दिस लाइट मे बी दिल ग्लेर इज टू मच इज देर टू मच ऑफ ग्लेर इज देर दट इज द रीजन मे बी वी आर हैविंग द इश्यू हाँ नव इट इज बेटर डॉक्टर it is better right focus focus so yes i think this is better see hamare regular classes mein powerpoint slides hota hai teacher ka video rehta hai wo sab that is a different uh, outlook this hand written review of the notes jo hai na lot of students are liking it they are enjoying it there is a personal touch in this uh, uh, kind of a content i am so happy about it please don't forget after this video like the video share the video with all your friends and also please write one comment about this video i will be very very happy about it could you be able to get that satisfaction that you understood the concepts or not if you can really write a comment that will be great inspiration for this teacher now doctor when chronic inflammatory condition jab hota hai there is a decreased ability to use the iron whenever erythropoietin comes and try to uh, show its effect then similarly inflammatory markers increased inflammatory markers is a feature of anemia of chronic disease sideroblastic anemia mein kya dikkat hai doctor the rbc precursors rbc precursors they have a defect to incorporate the iron into them at the time of the heme synthesis that is the whole challenge now what is the main difference iron deficiency is recognized predominantly by a low serum ferritin then a low serum iron and tibc very important differentiator doctor it is high in case of iron deficiency anemia 
थैलोसीमिया जो होता है इसमें सीरम फेरिटिन कैन बी नॉर्मल और एलिवेटेड बट एनीमिया ऑफ क्रॉनिक डिसीज में सिंस फेरिटिन इज ए वन ऑफ द एक्यूट फेज रिएक्टेंट इट इज सिग्निफिकेंटली एलिवेटेड सो आइडेंटिफ सो माइक्रोसाइटिक हाइपोक्रोमिक एनीमिया विथ ए हाई सीरम फेरिटिन मींस यू विल थिंक ऑफ एनीमिया ऑफ क्रॉनिक डिसीज इवन सिडरोब्लास्टिक एनीमिया में भी फेरिटिन का लेवल्स आर हाई बट वेरी हाई इन केस ऑफ एनीमिया ऑफ क्रॉनिक डिसीज Serum iron is slightly low in anemia of chronic disease, but it is serum iron. Jo hai na, serum iron, serum iron is elevated in sideroblastic anemia. So microcytic hypochromic anemia, but high iron levels, high ferritin levels. If the examiner gives you in the tomorrow's exam, no, jump and answer sideroblastic anemia. Now the main difference a gaya. Anemia of chronic disease versus iron deficiency, TIBC, total iron binding capacity. Total iron binding capacity will be high in iron deficiency anemia, whereas it is normal or low in case of anemia of chronic disease, which is the main differentiator. Then, iron deficiency anemia may bone marrow will try to will try to produce lot of RBCs. When lot of children are born, Ahmed Mia ko eight sons hai. To kya hota? Bade Mia, chote Mia, chotu Mia, aur chotu Mia. To you have very elderly son, very little son, and still a breastfeeding small infant. All sizes ka hai na? When production increased, then what happens, doctor? Poikilocytosis ho gaya. Poikilocytosis ho gaya to. If you happen to plot the shape of the RBCs, the shape of the RBCs versus the number of RBCs of that particular shape, you have all kinds of them. So that is the reason this is called red cell distribution width. It is increased because of poikilocytosis that occur in case of iron deficiency anemia <coughs> whereas thalassemia may this decreased globin synthesis is a problem in every cell uniformly that is the reason all cells will be of a uniform abnormally small size that is the reason normal rdw is thalassemia increased rdw is iron deficiency anemia brother now thrombocytosis is a associated feature with iron deficiency anemia Menzer index doctor very important this is more than 13 is an important feature of iron deficiency anemia then Menzer index less than 13 is the feature of the thalassemia very important differentiator similarly mean corpuscular hemoglobin concentration is increased MCV is less than 70 basophilic stippling they are all the other associated features of thalassemia. Now, sideroblastic anemia ke peripheral smear may you find dimorphic RBCs. Very, very important. Normal and dimorphic RBCs. Hemophilic, the basophilic stippling jo hota hai, basophilic stippling, that is the feature of sideroblastic anemia. And you will confirm the diagnosis of sideroblastic anemia by doing the bone marrow biopsy. Bone marrow biopsy. Usme kya hota hai, doctor? Bone marrow biopsy mein focus. So, bone marrow biopsy mein, it will show erythroid hyperplasia and ringed sideroblasts. And also, sideroblastic anemia ka one of the important kya causes kya hota hai, doctor? Lead. Isliye, lead levels ko select karna very important in sideroblastic anemia so that brings us to the end of a very important five class issues required by the examiner humne review kia thank you so much for listening till the end of the video tomorrow that is september 14th ko morning 10 am to evening 5 pm we are having a marathon session हम सब बैठेंगे मिलके पढ़ेंगे और मास्टर हो जाएंगे इन द सब्जेक्ट ऑफ ऑर्थोपेडिक्स 
Good night and enjoy the preparation of Need PG Doctor. Thank you.